OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. On the air, using and creating podcasts in the ESL classroom. OTAN Technology and Distance Learning Symposium 2020. Thank you for being here. Our presentation is on the air. And so we'll talk about how we have used and now how we are creating podcasts in our ESL classes. So a little bit about ourselves. My name is Gracia. Um, I'm an ESL instructor. We both work for California College of Communications. Um, in that school, I right now teach the professional program, which is a business English class. And I have my and colleague. My name is Celine, and uh, the same. I work at California College of Communication, and I teach reading, listening, and speaking, and grammar writing for level five and six, which are the highest level in the school. Mm -hmm. So just a quick overview of what we'll do today. Um, we'll start with a quick intro of what podcasts are. Um, I'll give you a quick overview of how we, we've used podcasts in our classes. And then we'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process of how we've now started creating podcasts or students are creating podcasts. And then we'll come to the strategies and consideration. We will see if you have questions. We will hopefully answer your questions. And uh, don't forget to evaluate this presentation on the OTAN website. So just to start us with, um, to hear from you, um, just think about the questions that are here on the board on your own. Uh, find a partner, someone who's close to you, and discuss the questions and share your answers. And then we'll have you share um, with the group. So just discuss what is a podcast, if you know, or have you used podcasts in your classes? If so, when? And then What's what your is your experience, experience? with them? Mm -hmm. And have you ever created podcasts? Mm -hmm. So yeah, take a few moments and discuss in your tables or with whoever's close to you. Just to have an idea. Uh -huh. So yeah, today it's all about creating podcasts with your students mm -hmm. in the ESL environment. Mm -hmm. So having them creating their own. So just a quick um, overview of what podcasts are. So yeah, so uh, digital audio or video, and then uh, it is available of an online platform. Uh, what is really important for Graziana is that it is authentic material. Authentic is definitely paramount for us. So why have we decided to integrate them as part of our classes, and why are we having now students create mm -hmm. them? So there are a couple of differences between uh, using in class and creating in class. There are also common uh, grounds. So critical thinking, when you use a podcast, it helps them to make their own judgment. Yeah. Knowing why, why does the journalist tell me that? What does he want me to think? What does he want me to know? What is the message behind, behind it? Mm -hmm. And then when they create on their own, there's a, a lot of collaboration happening. So they work as a team to create a product that they can then showcase to the class. When we listen, when we use in class, it is more about note taking skills. We listen and they take notes and then we share the notes. Mm -hmm. And then in creating, uh, we try to focus on more of their writing skills. So how they are writing a script that they, they, they can then record. And it's uh, all about uh, topical, uh, sorry. Sim simulating, stimulating topics like social issues, current issues. We talked a lot about guest impeachment. We talked a lot about uh, the, the election coming mm -hmm. and, uh, and also like uh, international news. And then when they create, obviously it's more about their, their own creativity. So they choose the topic, they create their own, they have the autonomy on connecting to a topic that they are interested in. And in class, actually, very often in the morning, I have maybe five or six if we just listen and I have them choose. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously communication is shared by both because they have to convey ideas both when they are discussing about it, something we used in class or when they are creating and recording. And then it develops their cultural awareness, uh, particularly in our environment. We have students coming from all around the world. So sometimes they are shocked to see the differences between their country and, and the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's very nice to exchange about that as well. And, and it, he sorry, oh, it helps them because they, they, they are here. So to understand and how to uh, behave in this country. Yeah. And then it builds motivation because once they realize and they know how to access, access podcasts on their own, they become more motivated and self-driving learners. 
uh, who can access and practice English outside of the classroom. Just go from there. And the last one, obviously, it helps us be more innovative in our teaching, and it makes the environment of learning for them as well um, more unique and fun. So how uh, to use podcasts and then create podcasts. So for the use in class, I mainly use NPR and PBS. I, use, I start with PBS because it's easier. They can see the images. And then NPR comes as a shock because it's much faster. So <laughs> later. And I use them in my uh, academic classes for listening and speaking. Uh, Grazia uses more like for discussion practice in her business English classes. And normally we function with a worksheet. We have pre-listening questions. It will be more about uh, brainstorming. What do you know about the, sub the, the topic? And, uh, mm -hmm. and then after that, during uh, comprehension questions, they take notes and, or fill in the blanks. So we can have many different mm -hmm. exercises. And post-listening is more about the topic of the podcast. And this is where also critical thinking comes. Yeah, so I'll walk you through briefly one example of what um, at podcast I used in um, the human resource management unit in the business English class I teach. Uh, the podcast title is Psychometric Tests in Recruitment. So we were talking about recruitment and the way I built the worksheet was like we said with a small warmer, in this case some discussion questions about the topic if they've taken those tests, helps activate prior knowledge and they become more interested in the topic. And then we always try to have a, a short vocabulary section. Podcasts, like we said, are authentic material, so they're not uh, created for the ESL classroom. A lot of the language that you find there is idiomatic or phrasal verbs that are Metaphors. very commonly used. Yeah. So we identify words we think may cause problems and discuss them, pre-teach them before they listen. Um, and then during the listening activity, the focus, as we said, is on note taking. For higher levels, uh, as you see here, it's more open-ended questions where they listen actively for details uh, and take notes to answer. And the post-listening in this case looks like a discussion in small groups where they, again, discuss what they learned or what was interesting. Yeah. Exactly, yes, they do. And that's how we build the worksheets with the transcript. And again, this is based on NPR podcasts mainly. All NPR podcasts, very good oh. question. Yeah, that's the strategy we use. We basically use the transcript to create this. Uh, yeah, and the post-listening can, um, can look differently, right? Sometimes we have them prepare an oral presentation based on the topic or do a small response writing. Uh, so that's what we've been doing. And we've been doing podcasts in our classes for the past two years mm -hmm. already. So um, now we realize it's a very fun activity. Students already are very familiar with how podcasts work. and how to listen to them. So we decided to kind of switch roles a little bit and have them be, instead of just consumers of the media, be the creators of the media to en uh, enhance other types of skills in the classroom. So we work in two different contexts. For me, it's academic program. And this podcast we are going to talk about today is from, from my reading class. So it is turning a little article into a podcast. Uh, so it's an article-based approach, and uh, of course it integrates other skills like writing and also listening and speaking. Mm -hmm. And then for mine, um, in my business English class, it's more of a research-based approach, and I use it as the end of module activity. So they just choose a topic based on the unit theme, and they do research on it to create a script and then record. So we'll walk you through, some, through the steps. So first, we give them a uh, worksheet, mm -hmm. uh, very detailed, very developed. Um, and after that, they have to choose an article. So we will just quickly go through that now and detail more uh, mm -hmm. later. So they choose with me, uh, they choose an article. Mm -hmm. first. And then for business class, like I said, it's topic based. So they choose a topic that relates to the theme. And then they do some individual reading. They have the article, they work on their own. They work at least three times. Mm -hmm. And read. for me, they start doing research on the topic they selected. And then pair sharing. And then for me, they do group discussion, because usually I work in bigger groups than just pairs. And after that, we write the script, we record, and we publish. Mm -hmm. So we'll walk you through the steps in more details. So the first step is uh, giving the worksheet. So the worksheet is, I don't know, probably three pages, something mm -hmm. like that. It is really detailed. Uh, basically, it gives them a full autonomy. They have the worksheet, they know what to do, and they just follow. Mm -hmm. So clear direction, clear steps, and it's a Google Doc. They just need to make a copy, and then they work directly on their copy. We can intervene, we can spy, we can see where they are. 
uh, it is very, very convenient. Yeah, and it provides the scaffolding they need, especially when script writing, because it's the first time they've written a script. So it gives them that guide that they need to really take autonomy of the task, but at the same time have some guidance um, to know where they're going. Yeah, and I, I noticed that they, they always want to know what comes after. If you tell them read before, it is not enough at all. They really want to know where we are going. So this is why these like detailed worksheet, they work really well. Mm -hmm. And so the second step is the uh, article selection. So um, I tried to find articles uh, from current events uh, about history or uh, so what I use mainly is the week. I really like it. We receive it every week at the school. Um, it's a compilation of articles from other uh, newspapers. So to me, it's really reliable. And uh, I will show you later, but you have very short articles to medium size to quite a size to very big size articles. So you can work in very a lot of different ways. Uh, it's a lot of um, material mm -hmm. to use. And also, um, yeah, once again, authentic material. Uh, in my case, because they do have to choose a topic, it has to be in this step. The topic is related to the unit theme. To give you an example, when we were doing HR management, I gave them a list of topics that we did not discuss in class. HR management is a very large field, so there's a lot of things that they can explore. And they choose from a list. They have, a free, they have freedom of exploration because they can relate to the unit that we studied in a more personal way. And as I mentioned earlier, for me, this works as my summative assessment because it's the end of the module activity, yeah, so the final project. As for me, it is formative assessment. So we will mm -hmm. read probably two short stories, and then after that, we have a break and we talk about some news. And I forgot to say that. So there are autonomies in the selection. I will choose before, but they will have, for example, if I have five groups, I will have 10 different articles for them to choose from. Mm -hmm. And I have short articles, so it can be about the US and it can be about the world. And depending mm -hmm. on the level I work with, I also have these like half page article. This one is about technology. So really providing things they want to read, things they know a little about, they want to learn about, uh, like intriguing for them. Mm -hmm. And after that comes the reading. So they read on their own, individually, at least three times. Uh, and I insist that they have a pen and they are active readers. Underline, put an exclamation mark, like really, so that when you read back, you know already a little. And then I don't want them to make any research because I want them to focus on the material they have in these few lines. And if they go online, they spend a lot of time losing their se themselves and they don't bring anything back. So this is very important. And the focus while they are reading is about the vocabulary. I insist that I really want them to try to understand the full article and then making sense, making meanings of the word in context. Um, and after that, of course, it's all about comprehension and critical thinking. Once again, like, where are we going with this article? Uh, for my class, because it's a research-based approach, in this step, they, uh, in their small groups, assign roles, and that means they split research. So what questions they will ask and who is going to look for what information. So the focus is more on the teamwork and collaboration skills. Obviously, critical thinking, because they have to together come up with the right questions to ask. And then research skills, because they practice um, finding uh, information in reliable sources based on the questions they came up with. And the step number four is sharing the discussion. So I always pair them. They work uh, to uh, students. And they report back to uh, each other. So to make sense together, to, to build up the meaning. Mm -hmm. So they collaborate, focuses once again on collaboration. They share their understanding uh, and, and critical thinking. Uh, what I want them to do is really share what they understood and, and answer the question. It's, it's like a ping pong. Uh, it's, it's, it's very beautiful to see them work together, actually. And um, use dictionary if, like, ultimately, if you really don't understand this word, ultimately go to the dictionary. But it has to be an English dictionary. Mm -hmm. And then in this step of sharing and discussion after they do the research, here is where they report back on the research from the questions they were looking information for. So focus is on critical thinking, because when they come together, they decide on what their main argument of the topic will be. 
as well as agree on which content they will use from all that research that they captured, what will they pretty much use in the script writing later on. And then here, one important step is that throughout, it's a very student-centered activity. So they are really the owners of the activity, but we are facilitators. Here is one step or stage where we really come in to make sure that before they write the yeah. script, they are going in the right direction. For Celine, whether that's, did they understand yeah. the article and the topic in the right way? What type of help do they need? What challenges are they facing that we can address? And in my case, it's like, did you find enough information? Where did you find it? Are you asking the right questions about the topic? What's your argument? What are you going to write your script about? So here is an important mm -hmm. uh, place where we jump in to the activity. And step five is all about writing their script. So for me, uh, as I have different types of articles, uh, they need to assign role. There are two, so they need two roles. So it can really be very varied. You can have a policeman uh, questioning a victim, questioning a perpetrator. You can have an anchor on like, they, they pretend they are PBS or NPR, mm -hmm. and receiving a, a specialist, a scientist, uh, the CIA, the one we are going to listen is about like the CIA. So it is a lot of creativity here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we focus on uh, writing skills because they need to paraphrase. I want them to use their own words. I don't want them to copy, so they really need to be uh, creative. They collaborate in this writing. Mm -hmm. And then they exercise their creativity because they convey the, the, their ideas in their own way. They express their feelings. Obviously, there's critical thinking because there is they have to think critically about who's our audience, how do we need to convey this in a clear manner uh, to make this argument or the story effective. Um, and then here is another stage where we jump in to offer support because it, um, it's writing, so we want to make sure that before they record, there are no mistakes, that they're going in the right direction, that it, that it sounds natural. Uh, we are uh, we use a lot of uh, Google Docs. Uh, so Google Docs, like we mentioned, the worksheet is on Google Docs. So when they write the script, it's also a shared document where we, in real time, start editing with them or giving feedback as they write. And here, uh, probably more for me than for Grazia, when they read an article, they will tend to ask one question, all right? And then the specialist will answer blah, 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 and give all the details and done. So this is also where I try to guide mm -hmm. them like to, to, to make a kind of ping pong, one answer, one question. Uh, as, as when we listen to, uh, to the PBS or the NPR, like the authentic material. Mm -hmm. Here's and where after the fun that, part. The fun part, exciting part, the recording. So they use their own phone. Um, and the focus is here on communication, uh, speaking skills about the fluency, about their pronunciation. They are pushed to improvise uh, and um, collaboration because when they record, they can criticize each other, say, oh, maybe you should say this, maybe you should say that, oh, I like that. Um, and we make several recordings because we want them to kind of forget the phone and start to have fun. Mm -hmm. And when after, after a couple, they really have fun and they start to be more natural and relaxed and, and it is... And beautiful. then again, creativity comes in this stage because not only are they sometimes improvising and coming up with their own words and ideas and express their, themselves, but also um, after they record, when they do the sound editing, we introduce them to two tools that are optional and they can use, which are written here, GarageBand, which is the screenshot you see there. Uh, it's for iOS, so if they have a Mac and they want to add sound effects, they can use that. For Windows users, they can use Audacity. And sometimes they just come up with their own sound effects, like with their voices to make the podcast sound a little bit more fun and realistic, like NPR or PBS uh, at the start. So I'll just play a very short clip of uh, two examples. The first one, when some students used GarageBand to add some sound effects. And the second one, when the, an, an example where they created their own sound effects at the beginning. Welcome to this podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Quantum Talks. My name is Renato, and I'll be hosting today's podcast. I'm here today with Dr. Park, a quantum physicist from South Korea. Yeah. He's a specialist in social media behavior. Hello, Nato. 
It's a pleasure being here. <laughs> so that's one for the business English yeah. class they did on social media, and then another one where they created their own sound effects at the beginning to make it more fun. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marcia. Welcome to NPR News. We are here today to talk about what happened in Iran. Last January, an Ukrainian international plane was shut down by the Iranian Islamic regime. Among the victims. Mm -hmm. So, just a clip of how they are editing and having some fun. Yeah, and as we can hear, like there is an introductory sentence. And, and very mm -hmm. often, when they write the script, they completely forget about that. And they start recording it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. hello. Who did that? And then I'm like, no, you cannot do that. Yeah. You need to, you know, bring bring the food on a platter, I say. Yeah. Like, introduce your topic. Introduce your guests. We need to know what you're going to talk about. You need a little sentence to, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's and it's it's really nice to see how they find it really, they have a lot of fun. Yeah. Last step. And so last step is publishing. Uh, so I want to thank Cindy here, yeah. who we learned about this at yes, Catesol. We at Catesol, we went to uh, her presentation and we started actually building up our website during your workshop. So um, so we used and then that. We added this step in yeah. in our podcast usage to. So have I have one for each of my class. So here is the level five. Sorry. Sorry. And no problem. And. Uh, so I, I share that, I publish okay. it, and they can all access uh, this. So as you see, you have all my, uh, the, the topic mm -hmm. I teach. And then for the reading, so here is uh, the one about the podcast. You, they can find the uh, worksheet here. And if they click, it opens in big. And after that, uh, I, would, I would put only two for today. So you, you, we can listen in the class. We can listen from this. And at home, they can also listen. Mm -hmm. So let's listen. So this is mine, right? Yeah. From Calcici. I'm here to talk about the event that happened with the American plane in Denmark, Afghanistan. Today, I will interview Lucas from the CIA. Welcome to Calcici podcast. Hello, Chihiro. Thank you for inviting me today. So, could you explain what happened in the street? This week, we have recovered the bodies of two U.S. service members who died in a plane crash in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so here it. we have a very, so it's from a small article, a very short one. And um, so about a plane crash in Afghanistan. All right. And um, so they decided because one, they were reporting some like um, intelligence said that blah, blah, blah. So they decided the rule would be one from NPR, one of the CIA. I love the way she says, this is Lucas from the CIA. <laughs> 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 and yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, and so they, they decided to to cut the so I, I in, invite them to really have short questions and short answers. Mm -hmm. It is also easier for them and, and it makes all the process more understandable when we listen. And so having this step of publishing on a class website really helps with um, with a lot of things. More than anything, uh, we can do some peer editing and feedback. So we can listen as a class and discuss what's working, what's not. Maybe next time you should think about doing this differently or pronouncing this differently. It's very fun and motivating for them to see that their work is published and shared in the class. Um, yeah, and that builds that sense of pride, pride and confidence because they realized they were able to create a podcast, to work together and publish something. So it might be the first draft. Yeah, the, the ones with the sound effects yeah, was the published yeah. one. I think. And to be honest, like uh, we haven't been that doing that for a long, long time. So you can see the motorcycle on the street. And mm -hmm. so we need to be a little professional, more professional ourselves. We need to put them in a, in a room far from the street. And we need because oh. sometimes you can hear a lot of like movement. And so we are beginners, but yeah, still they have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so to finish on the website, they can also so they oh, yeah. can listen. And also they have the script. And can you open yeah. because we have time? Thank you. So on the website, they will also find uh, in my reading section, for example, uh, the short stories we read. Oh, yeah. So they mm -hmm. have, this is the PDF. If they click, they have the PDF file. If this is my uh, spreadsheet for the vocabulary. And then a YouTube link to see the biography of the writer, for example. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot, a lot of uh, 
slides, for example, because we really have time, so maybe we can just show you. <laughs> but we still have strategies. <laughs> so for the writing, uh, we have a book, but I really like when my students look at me rather than their book. And so I have uh, slides for all my chapters and they can access, they can review before um, the exams and they really like it. I really encourage you to use that. It's lovely. Google is just, Google Drive is amazing. I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> and then a few strategies and considerations to think about when you're doing that. Uh, choosing the content is uh, important. Uh, something you are knowledgeable about because if they read and they ask you a question you need to be able to answer um, and something you feel comfortable uh, discussing. Also it is important that the student interest is at stake here so you want to have things that um, they really want to read uh, and somehow they know a little about. Uh, sometimes they are not very, very into it, but when they read after that and when you explain a little, uh, it works. Mm -hmm. Reliable sources and updated, so I mainly use the week for that. Also, um, well, there are a lot of uh, yeah, even NPR, like yeah. the podcast that they offer, yeah. they have an article of mm. it as well. So you can use that as the you reading find, yeah. article before they actually a lot create of articles a podcast on, on it. NPR, yes, every um, day. And, and BBS, also, the same. Uh, yeah, sorry. And for me, so it's a part of uh, an ongoing lesson. Uh, if you find uh, an article related to what you talked about, for example, I had uh, an entire uh, section of the book about the aging of the workforce. And I had uh, an article about the aging population in the United States. So we, we, we use that um, because it is about like using an article to create podcasts and also using podcast in class. Um, and uh, also it can be a standalone uh, um, class. And for Grazia, it's even an exam. Yeah, for me, it's their final project and it's a fun way of assessing their knowledge of the topic. It's business English mm -hmm. and it's communication skills. So I and really need fun. to assess how they convey ideas, how they do research, how they understand the, mm -hmm. the module, in this case, mm -hmm. human resources, for example. So, and they don't feel like it's a test because it's not a written multiple choice. Uh, the module one month, every month is a different module. So at the end of each month, they do a final project. Sometimes the final project is the podcast, not for every module, but for a few of them, I've already tried this. Mm -hmm. And as for me, I think I spend, I would say, three sessions of 50 minutes, uh, particularly the first time you do it with them, because yeah. they need to understand the process, they need to get used to it. So it's a lot, but it's a lot of skills. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I don't like we don't lose our time. And no. so, <laughs> when and when we're creating podcasts, so the very important thing is to have good guidelines. So you need a solid worksheet. Um, so that they can build, do some scaffolding. And the final product, if I may say, is two or three minutes long. So this is also why it's important for them to really cut one question, one answer, one question, because otherwise it is too short. Yeah. Um, so we've b mainly discussed how we use them in my business class, which is very high advanced level, and Celine's class, which is advanced and high advanced. But you can also adapt it to different levels. I used to teach level three, which is the intermediate level. And I already used, I didn't create podcasts mm -hmm. with them, but I used them in the class. Uh, and rather than open-ended questions, which is what I do for the note-taking mm -hmm. section with business class, for them it was more guided notes or skeleton notes, where they just fill in the blanks with specific words or details. They had a lot of fun. And NPR can be rather fast, but this website, Online Tone Generator, it's really nice because you can adapt the pace of the audio and it still keeps its natural sound. It doesn't sound robotic and you can adapt it to different paces. So that worked really well when I did it with level three. Uh, and when it comes to creating podcasts, obviously, like we've shown, these are long scripts that they spend time doing. But if you have a beginner, level class, you may have them do a five line mm. conversation on introducing themselves mm. in the form of an audio and podcast that they share with the class. So it can be adapted to different levels. As I mentioned, it's throughout a student center activity because they are the ones running most of the of the of the stages and of the steps. But we are there as facilitators. So as teachers, we need to consider that our role will be very different in an activity like this. 
we are no longer just giving yeah. knowledge, but we are monitoring mm -hmm. and facilitating, but letting them themselves um, be the ones who are taking charge of their learning. And it can be very rewarding as teachers as yeah. well to have to take on that role when students are to, are driving to, the learning. To be needed. <laughs> they need you. They read and they call teacher and, and then they so I am not sure. Do you think it is this or it is mm -hmm. that? And there is much more like interaction. So yeah. so much more uh, in this uh, setting. And uh, some other considerations about promoting metacognition. Uh, it develops uh, critical awareness about their own learning. Uh, it's a good way for them to uh, do self-assessment, self-correcting, because when they hear their voice, sometimes they are like, ooh, not good. <laughs> uh, and also, yeah, a lot of reflection. Um, and also we use a lot of Google form. Oh, so yeah. Google form. So after uh, the uh, activity, uh, you can create a Google form and they can uh, assess uh, their opinion and how they did. Uh, if, if they think that, okay, I was, I understood 50% and so it's, it is also interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it works like a ping pong, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they yes, ask what, themselves and each yeah. other what's working, what I can do better. So uh -huh. throughout you can integrate these metacognitive strategies to have them think about how they're learning and how they are. Um, doing and with that it's connected to helping them also develop more pragmatic language skills not only when using them because when you use podcast mm -hmm. in the class they really hear real people yeah. real language in real context and they can start um, understanding or identifying discourse markers for example and how people uh, have a conversation naturally mm -hmm. and then when they're creating they think about what to say and how to say it so it sounds more natural and it can develop those skills that help them um, interact in a more natural way. So it's good for both uh, um, familiarizing themselves with how pragmatic language works, as well as trying to them they themselves reflect on that and put that into practice when they record it. So uh, sometimes, like Celine said at the beginning, when they record, they don't think about that. Yeah, they it's just very dry. Robotically read the script off, yeah. but then with your, with our guideline, they start realizing that it has to sound natural. And then we, you can go back to the podcasts you heard in class and have them mm -hmm. reflect on how the, 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 the interview goes, right? What are they saying that sounds more natural? Identifying, yeah. like I said, the discourse markers, like what are those phrases you can use rather than just a silent period and then next question and next questions, but more naturally talk about and the topic. What is funny is that, so they record and instead of they, they acknowledge the nod. So I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they can't hear you, yeah. right? So this, like, what you, uh huh, mm -hmm. I see. Yep. Mm. All these little uh, um, connectors, markers, all these yep. little signals that show that you are listening, you understand, and you really want to know more about the subject. Yeah. And also, uh, I encourage them when we talk about natural reaction, is also like, give give your feeling if someone tells you something horrible be horrified and say oh my god that's terrible oh that's great so really tr trying to add these little um signals uh showing well making it more natural yeah, conveying and, language in a more yeah. natural way and once they understand that that's where they start to have a lot of fun because they improvise and they are so proud of themselves after that it's amazing yeah yeah, because textbooks usually, especially mm. for listening and speaking, right, they are not necessarily good for this. It's a bit flat. Yeah. yeah, so that's why when we started integrating NPR and PBS, we realized it really helps them with that. And now now that we've been using them for maybe six months, mm -hmm. so we're still learning, but we've realized that it, it's really helping them. Yeah, it's really with fun. That. And as you've seen throughout, uh, we try to kind of use this framework of the 21st century forces, the forces throughout our activities. So first one is communication because they share information they mm -hmm. understand and they express their opinion, they express their emotion. So it is, it is um, a key um, part. And then obviously throughout their collaboration, it's not an activity they do on their own. So whether they're reading an article and understanding it together through discussion or they're creating a product together, it really builds community in the class. Mm -hmm. They feel like they, they, they are a team. Yeah, and collaboration works also when you listen to a podcast because I didn't tell you that before because I tend to listen to podcasts every morning 
as a warm-up, waiting for everybody to be here. And of course, I don't create a worksheet every morning. So we listen and we make sense like together. We, we build up the understanding of what they say. And this week, for example, I had an entire sentence from NPR. I needed 10 students to make the full sentence. So it's real collaboration because it mm -hmm. was so fast. Uh, and, and someone had one word, the second word, the third word, and up together, the full sentence was on the board. And they, they like it. They demand, they, they want in the morning. They're like, teacher, can we listen to a podcast? And they say, they say Judy, because it's PBS lady, and, and we listen to PBS a lot. So can we have Judy this morning? So yeah, it, it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, Judy and, is great. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I love Judy. <laughs> and that's how that starts building critical thinking, right? Because uh, you start moving beyond the, the reading textbook or the unit theme. They make personal connections, especially in my class, it's been like that. Like they discover topics within the unit theme um, in a more personal way and then they think critically about it. Um, so it's kind of moving as beyond the regular mm -hmm. standard textbook based approach so it really helps them think beyond and if i may add something it also mm -hmm. helps them outside of the school because as i tell them you cannot always talk about the weather oh it's nice today end mm -hmm. of the conversation you need to know a little you need to be able to exchange to ask questions and and it's a good uh, yeah like, like it's, it's the a cultural package. awareness yeah. also and mm -hmm. they connect mm -hmm. to the target culture and then they can talk about things that are yeah. going on in their environment besides the weather and obviously, with this new approach of having them actually create podcasts, creativity is at, um, at the forefront because, like we said, we're moving them from just consuming the media mm. in our classes to creating the media themselves. Uh, and that really makes them 21st century learners because it also builds technology skills, yeah. if you mm -hmm. think about it. They know how to use Google Docs. Mm -hmm. They know how that mm -hmm. works. They know how to publish on our Plus website. They know how to record and edit yeah, sound. And share and, yeah. So it really builds those mm -hmm. skills that, uh, that they can use outside, right? Those even mm -hmm. soft skills. All of these are those soft skills. And as we heard in the keynote yesterday, those are the skills that we really yeah. need to in integrate mm -hmm. in our classes because they're not explicitly get, getting them in the courses. Mm -hmm. So activities such as these can really help promote those skills within the class. Um, yeah, and that's it. And just ending before oh, yeah. we do some Q&A uh -huh. and discussion, it's a quote from some of the students in yeah. the high and the advanced group. Yeah, they really like it. So because creativity, of course, and also uh, it improves the reading and uh, the reading skills. Uh, it's a great activity for them and they love at the beginning, I'm telling you, they don't. But listen to themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eventually, nice. they get there. Yeah, um, it's a and, hard one at yeah. first. And then they will go. Uh, I, I always uh, tell them to use Cambridge Dictionary Online. And then by themselves, they will open Cambridge. They will listen to the pronunciation. They will repeat. It is also yeah, good, good, for, yeah, good for their uh, like self-learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It gives them all those And it's fun. And it's different. Definitely, they had never done that before. As I said, the beginning is a little complicated, but once they know, they love it. Yeah. It's a beautiful They activity. don't realize they are being assessed. Yeah, it's true. They are just having yeah. fun it is and true. creating content. Uh -huh. But for us, it's a very great way to assist. Uh, so yeah, we invite you to try oh. it and podcast on. <laughs> it's a very fun um, activity to integrate. And as you've seen, I mean, Celine integrates her in, in her reading class, mm -hmm. using them we've mostly done in listening and speaking. But uh, in business, it's a more integrated skills approach overall the class mm -hmm. itself. So this really helps, like I said, with research skills uh, and reading at the same time, summarizing, synthesizing. So all these critical yeah. uh, higher order thinking skills for business, which they really need when they go into the workforce. So for me, it's been a very great activity yeah. to kind of all in one integrate different types of skills. And we said we are kind of beginners in the field, but uh, ultimately now we are just publishing and they are accessible on our internal website. It's the class website, mm -hmm. by the way. But I think that eventually in the future, we would like to use the podcast created by yeah. the previous quarter students to uh, use them in, in the listening class. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that they have kind of authentic, authentic ESL students material. Yeah. yeah. Like, and as we said, even like at the lowest level, they can create a little conversation that they can record. Mm -hmm. What is your name? My name is, where are you from? Very basic question. Level one, they can, they can do that. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, it's that when, so I think 
we realized at the beginning that the worksheet, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. to be very clear. Mm -hmm. So we just had created maybe a one page yeah, yeah. guideline at mm -hmm. first and we realized yeah. it was challenging because the students really didn't, especially I would say in the script mm -hmm. writing mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. is where they struggled because the worksheet just gave an overview of the task. Mm -hmm. But now we yeah. kind of opened the script section to like think of an introduction. Mm -hmm. yeah. What were the questions? So uh -huh. more scaffolding in the script writing really helped because it was a challenge at first. Yeah. At first they just kind of wrote a mini yeah. essay they and they wanted it, to yeah. record uh -huh. that, but it, it, yeah. We realized it needed, mm -hmm. and with that, it kind of helped us when we use podcast in class to also reflect about how a podcast works. So think mm -hmm. about how did they stop, like pausing yeah. in between before they oh. record. So how did the, the interviewer mm -hmm. start the podcast? So think about that when you're writing your script. Yeah. So modeling, uh -huh. because at first it was a little messy, that section of yeah. script writing. Organize the ideas. So yeah, yeah question one, uh, like at least I asked them to write seven questions. Yeah, and very explicit. Yeah, like it exactly. has to be this long, at least and, this long. And short questions, short answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so definitely from one page, we went to three, three, very three pages. Mm -hmm. uh, my mistake at the beginning was that some articles were too hard and they were lost. Um, so now I, I really pay attention to that. Uh, not in terms of vocabulary, but in terms of topic. Mm -hmm. We had a very, very hard one about uh, Germany and uh, alt-right in Germany. And they were, it was complicated because it was a lot of references in maybe seven lines. So that, that was definitely a bad choice. So that was my yeah, bad. Yeah, so topic we, selection, yeah, pretty important as a teacher. If you're doing the reading, uh -huh. the article based approach, make sure. But still we <laughs> finished it are. because I, sp I really sat with them and we talked about it and we like made some, you know, like some drawings to, okay, who is this guy? This guy did that. And then the consequences are here. So if, if you have the lecture of time, it is, it is still possible. Right now, it's mainly their own phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, voice recorder. Mm -hmm. And then they send by so email. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and when phone, they do yeah. the sound editing, mm -hmm. they can send themselves the recording from their phone to their emails and upload it to the garage band, which mm -hmm. is the iOS or the Audacity platform to, to edit it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a great idea moving yeah. to another platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And YouTube mm -hmm. is extremely common and popular among students. So it That's would be a nice, mm -hmm. nice another platform nice to access yeah. it. So I tell them, I don't hear anything. And if I don't hear voices, you're not, not collaborating correct. because collaborating means talking. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I tell them you need to collaborate. Uh, so sometimes it's complicated, but, but they get there. And then they understand also, why is it important to collab? Why it is important to collaborate? Because oh, I didn't understand that word. Hey, but I know. So they can exchange about vocabulary. But you're right. Sometimes it's it's difficult, particularly when they don't choose their partner. Yeah, I was going to <laughs> say. And sometimes they are not part. so happy about my choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but but. That's but yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if, if you see that it doesn't work, uh, yeah, I tell them as a class, if it, I still see that they bug, I go and I talk to them, uh, telling them that that's the purpose. I, it's listening and speaking. I want you to listen to your partner. I want you to speak to your partner. Mm -hmm. So the script writing looked a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So that's where we check in and make sure that Everybody's yeah. getting somewhat of mm. the same mm. amount of speaking. And if you're the anchor, what are the questions you're asking based on the research that they collected in my case? Because it's not based on an article. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A script yeah, is yeah, very, yeah. very uh -huh. important. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Like introduce, so who are you? What is your program? Uh, introduce your guest. And what are you going to talk about? Mm -hmm. Question one, answer one. Question two, answer two. Yeah, very. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, thank the guest and yeah, yeah so because they forget about all that stuff. Yeah, so because it's only internal yeah. at the moment, mm. uh, we just discussed it and got like verbal consent. Mm -hmm. I believe that if we oh, go yeah. to the next uh -huh. step of having it be distributed outside yeah. of our classroom, really, we would have to have some type of mm. waiver or consent form. No, we are a private school, so yeah. really not. Um, uh, yeah, we don't abide by any district rules, mm. but as a school, we do have some regulations. Mm. The material may be used outside. So like I said, we are not there yet, 
but definitely something yeah. we've considered and yeah. thought about if we, we are to distribute this that. outside. Yeah, right now, it's pretty much the classroom yeah. only, not even other classrooms, right? It's just our classroom yeah. for now. They listen to podcasts uh -huh. outside because yeah. we've used them so much now, for yeah. the last two years. So now they yeah. do uh -huh. go outside and find nice podcasts that they can listen to at home. So it's been nice to see that, but not yet the creation. Mm -hmm. So we talked about that actually, yeah. like, uh, interviewing oh, yeah, we are inside the school. Of that. Like you go mm -hmm. with your phone, you prepare your questions and it should be interesting questions like, yeah. like what's your name and where are you from? Something a little deeper and walk around the school and ask the other students. Yeah, but not yet. But it, Maybe next year we'll talk about it that. Will come. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of told them we're thinking of mm -hmm. uh, now moving to mm -hmm. having you create podcasts. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously bumps on the road at the beginning. We kind of just let's try it with this one page worksheet yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and then kind of gradually moved. Luckily, we are lucky that we have the same group for three months. Mm -hmm. So we were able to learn with them at the beginning what was not working and then the last month really worked well. In my case, my group stays for more than three months. Yeah. So I've been really, they already are familiar and I've been really able to um, to kind of learn with them and they know what I mean when I said last, the final project for this unit will be podcast, they already know yeah. how it works. What is good has somehow is that before that, they know because I am lucky enough to have them in level five and then in level yeah, six. That's true. So mm -hmm. they six know podcast. Really. They know Judy, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. So um so when I when we record and, and they, they it is so dry and boring, I tell them, Come on guys, Judy doesn't do that. Judy, she's she she's involved. She likes she, yeah. she's passionate. So be passionate. Your and and they know exactly what I'm talking about. So it it helps to definitely work with that uh, upstream. Mm -hmm. So the problem is the length. Mm -hmm. But I really like the daily. Yeah. It's it's amazing, and I tell my students to listen to it. But a podcast above four minutes, it is too For long. Class, it is too much vocabulary. Really it is too complicated. Yeah. So, so I think this is why PBS, why we have st st yeah. st stick with um, yeah. Yeah, NPR and PBS because mm -hmm. of the length. Yeah, VOA. I think some of yeah. our lower level yeah. teachers have used. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, yeah, we. I, I used it, but I, I really prefer PBS. Yeah, definitely. it's more challenging. Also, I've started to listen to 60 Minutes, uh -huh. and I really love Anderson Cooper. So oh, yeah. maybe it's because he's married with a French guy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I really like the way he speaks. And okay. so I, I think I will also try to isolate this yeah. part of uh, 60 Minutes. And, and it yesterday, uh, we went to a session here, actually, where they talked about CNN 10, 10-minute uh, yeah, news reports. Yeah. It's a collection of yeah. different units. So, so, yeah, so maybe that's something to also uh, implement. It just, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's a 10-minute video, really. Yeah. Uh, but it, it captures the news from the week or the day. I don't okay. quite remember the day uh -huh. in 10 minutes. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> let's move on to the last one. So um, these are just, just our contact information for those asking about the slides and handouts. You can follow this tiny CC, uh, tiny URL. And honestly, if you use that, just let us know about it. Tell us how it went. Yeah, and or any suggestions. Mm -hmm. And obviously, don't forget the evaluation yeah. for OTAN, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for coming.